Hello, my name is Amit Power and welcome to my new updated video on the transverse approach to the thoracic paravertebral block. Uh, we're going to start off with some anatomy here and here you can see we've removed the skin, the soft tissue, the muscle uh, of the back and we're looking at the posterior aspect of the back. We can see the vertebral bodies with their spinous processes, the lamina, the transverse processes, the rib, the pleura, the superior costo transverse ligament and the intercostal nerve. So let's zoom in now over a spinous process, looking down onto the lamina of the vertebral body below. We see a transverse process, the superior costo transverse ligament, and deep to that, you can see the intercostal nerve. Just a point of note here, if you're performing a transverse approach to the paravertebral space, that barrier that you need to break through is not actually the superior costo transverse ligament, but it's actually the internal intercostal membrane. But more on that later. So why use a transverse approach to the paravertebral space? Well, I found over the years of teaching it's often easier for novice practitioners. And also, in patients living with obesity, I find this technique easier. Some practitioners like the fact with the transverse view, you get an extended view of the pleura. So as you're approaching the paravertebral space with the needle, you know what to stay away from. But I will just give you a point of caution. We need to be careful whenever we're directing our needle towards the neural axis to make sure the needle doesn't dive underneath the shadow of the transverse process or inadvertently get too close to the midline. So what we're aiming for is ultimately something that looks a little bit like this. Here we've got a curved array probe in the midline scanning over the spinous process. We're going to get a nice view of the laminae and then we're going to slide laterally into the intercostal space you can see the glistening pleura, then the medial part of the probe is going to come up onto a transverse process and you get that lovely transverse view of the paravertebral space. Let's highlight some of the anatomy here. Here's the adipose tissue. Deep to that we've got the paraspinal muscles, the trapezius, the rhomboid and the erectospinal muscle complex. You've then got the shadow cast by the transverse process the pleura deep to that and there is that internal intercostal membrane and deep to that is a paravertebral space. Now that all happened very quickly, so let's break that down into smaller steps. The first thing to do is to identify the midline. Now you notice in the image on the bottom right, I've highlighted one of the vertebral bodies in green. And this is to emphasize the point that, we're scan that when we are scanning over that spinous process, it's actually the spinous process from the level above. You'll see what I mean in a second. So here we go. We'll place the curved array probe on the midline, scanning over that spinous process from the level above, down onto the lamina, and either side of the lamina, you can see the transverse processes. So let me add a color overlay over that. So here you go. There's a spinous process shadow from the level above. There is a lamina of the vertebral body at the level you're scanning. And either side of that, you can see the transverse processes. And then that's that general view, that bony outlook that you've got. The next thing to do is to slide your probe from the midline laterally. In an ideal world, you'd scan laterally over the long axis of the rib, and you see where the rib meets the transverse process at the costo-transverse junction, and then you slide down into the intercostal space. But sometimes when you do that, you slide straight into the intercostal space. So let's see what happens here. The probe slides laterally over the long axis of the rib, down into intercostal space, and then we rotate the medial part of the probe up onto the transverse process. So here again is the shadow of the transverse process. There's the pleura, and there's the paravertebral space deep to it. So let's put all of that together. Curved array probe in the midline. We've got a nice view of the transverse process. We come out into the intercostal space. We come up onto the rib and back down into the intercostal space to confirm that we're correctly aligned. Now all that remains is that we need to bring our needle from in plane, from lateral to medial, inject local anesthetic and get that really beautiful drop of pleura. Now some practitioners will choose to needle out of plane, but my preference is to needle in plane. Let's see a real block in practice here. We've got the same orientation, right is medial, left is lateral. The needle is coming in from the left hand side of the screen. You can see the shadow of a transverse process. You can see the pleura glistening below. Now let's place that, play that video. So here's the needle. We're going to use a bit of hydrolocation to see where the needle is. You can see the erector spinal muscle is lifting up and out of the way so we can advance a little bit more. We're trying to get that needle tip into view. A bit more hydrolocation. As we pop through this tissue here, we're going to see the needle tip come into view. Once we see that needle tip come into view there, 
We inject local anaesthetic and there's that lovely drop of the pleura that confirms that our needle is in the right space. Generally speaking, I tend to use between 20 to 25 mils of local anaesthetic per hemithorax, and it's as simple as that. Though, do I have any tips for you? Yes, I like to use either a curved array probe or a linear probe with the virtual convex function activated because that allows you to have a wider field of view. I think if you're going to use this approach, it's easier to perform, the, perform it with the patient in the lateral position or in the prone position. Um, I like to needle in plane, but some people use the outer plane needling, but it's really important whatever technique that you use, that you use hydrolocation with a seeker solution to make sure you don't inadvertently pass your needle too deep and make sure you can identify the needle tip at all times. The last thing to say, it's really important when you're scanning that you stabilize your hand to avoid that unintentional sliding. I really hope that you found this video useful and I'd like to thank Dr. Shelley Lee, Dr. Mick Kerr and Courtney Andrews for their help in producing this video.